In case that you don't know what a virtual machine is and you've never tried it before, I'm making this video so you can see how it's actually done. So, as I said in the other video, you need this uh, Windows XP image or a uh, disk if you have that. You'll open up VirtualBox and get this nice image, you'll hit new, and here you're going to describe what you're actually going to run. In this case, it's Windows XP Professional. And here you'll uh, select if it's 32-bit or 64-bit, in my case it's 32-bit. Uh, so let's move on. Here you allocate memory or RAM to, uh, to, to the virtual machine, the computer inside your computer. And you can easily uh, go with the default value, but if you want to, to have a bit more powerful machine, as we want in this case when we're making PlayStation games, we'll, we'll want a bit more. So I said one, uh, mine to uh, two gigabytes of RAM. Here you'll just leave it by uh, the default. You want to create a virtual hard disk now. You'll just hit create and just leave it as it is the entire way. Um, here you can select the size of it. 10 gigabytes is fine for now. We don't need much. All right, and it started. It's created. Now we need to install Windows XP on it. So we started. And this was pop up. So here we're going to select the disk we want to use. You'll click this little file here and you'll select the image. And hit start. You'll see that Windows XP will start booting. Or the installer will start booting. So, when you make it to this point, uh, you want to format the hard drive of the computer. So you just hit enter on this one. You say format the partition using the NTFS file system. And we'll format it. Now the setup will start. When it's done, I will uh, get back. Or not when it's done, but when it asks for more details. I'll pause the video and return while it's there. See you later. Alright, so at some point you'll see the screen. If that's the case, then you're good to go. Alright, so you'll reach this point where it prompts you to select region and language options. So here um, it will set the format setting to English and the location set to United States. So that's fine. It also says that I want to use US keyboard layout, which is not the case since I'm from Denmark and use Danish keyboard layout. So I hit details, hit add, and I pick Denmark from the list. Where is Denmark? Or Danish. I'll hit OK. I'll go back and remove United States. And it says that Windows cannot be moved to the United States because it's currently in use. It will be removed the next time you reboot uh, or log on or log off. The weird part about this is that if you go back, it's Danish is set by default and you can actually remove the United States without problems. So, yeah, never mind that. All right, you continue. You give your, uh, your, your computer name, I'll call mine, with us. And you'll continue. Set the time and date, your time zone, time zone is GMT plus one. I live in Copenhagen. So we'll continue. I'll get back when there's more to do. Okay, so you'll be prompted to write a network group. In this case, you just fill in some nonsense. Nonsense. I don't know if that's the way it's built, but anyways, I don't care what you put there. It's not really because we're part of a network where we need to work together here. That's what this is really used for. Anyways, 
when there's more I'll get back. Okay, we're at this point now. To improve the appearance of visual elements, Windows will automatically adjust the screen resolution. We'll just hit OK and adjust the resolution. I can read this text, so I'll hit OK here. We are ready to install Windows XP. Oh, I want automatic updates. Will this computer connect to the internet directly or through a network? Uh, no. This computer will connect directly to the internet. Not at this time. I would not like to register at Microsoft right now. My name is Widas. Thank you, I'm ready to go. Here's what you've accomplished. Your computer is configured for internet access finish. And we're good to go. So here we are. Let me just put this full screen. And when you're at this point, you might think that it's a bit annoying that the screen is so small uh, and you want it to fill the entire screen. Well, there's a solution for that. Uh, because VirtualBox has some tools you can install inside the machine and then will adjust to your machine. Also stuff that you can drag and drop files to the machine, which is pretty cool. So, if you go here to input, uh, or where is it? Devices? Let's see here. Where is it? Actually, here. Insert guest edition CD image. So this thing will pop up and you'll just install it like a usual program. There you go. You want to reboot it now. And the machine will reboot. As you see, it is full screen. So what is handy to do at this point is to go to Devices, go to Shared Clipboard and say Bidirectional. Also say Drag and Drop Bidirectional. What is that doing? Well, if we create a text document in here and write some stuff, and I decide to copy this, uh, if I go back to my machine, my real machine here, and create a new text file, I'd actually be able to paste what I what I did there and the other way around. If I copy this, I can take it to the virtual machine. Now, what is even cooler about this is if I have a file here, or actually a folder with files, I can just drag this thing to the machine. And you see the folder is here with our new text document inside of it. So that's it. Now you're ready to do PlayStation development or what else you want to do with your virtual machine. See you later. I hope you enjoyed the video.